Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Super C Roku's 2019 webinar. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You have joined the presentation using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, please just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the question pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation and our support team will be answering some of them on the spot, but we will also select some to be addressed during the Q&A session at the end. Today's webinar is being recorded and you will receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view the recording. Our guest speaker for today's session is, needs no introduction, so he's well known by you and loved by the travel community. We are thrilled to have uh, Mark Monroy, our Managing Director for the Americas, present this World Cruise 19 webinar. Mark has participated in meetings for this program since the beginning and, and was, of course, a key contributor on the planning of this World Cruise 19 itinerary. He is, without a doubt, the best person to give you all the details we have confirmed so far on this magnificent journey. Uh, before I pass it on to um, Mark, uh, we're just going to do a couple of quick questions. We just want to have a few for the audience. So um, if you take your time to answer, uh, I'll just launch the question for you. Uh, we would like to know if you have sold a war cruise before. So please, um, there's a few options there. Yes, you have several, just one, booked a war cruise but not with Super C, or no, I haven't, but I'm dreaming on my first war cruise booking. We'll give um, you a couple moments to finish that question. All right, so um, just a few more seconds. For anyone that still wants to vote. All right, so it looks we have like a pretty much 50 50 split on yes, I have booked several war cruises, and no, I haven't. So it's a, a very uh, divided audience. So that's great for Mark to know. And last question based on your experience. Um, which benefits are the most important for your clients on a work cruise? So we put over there a few um, options, uh, sure side events, uh, onboard spending credit, or extra onboard amenities like laundry service and Wi-Fi, or greater variety of onboard activities um, for your clients, for days at sea and such. All right, we'll give you a few more minutes. By the way, you can select more than one answer if you feel there's two of those things that are very important to your clients. I bet you everybody's going to hit all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, it looks like we have a good number of answers. I'm going to close the pool right now. So, yeah, it looks like um, short events, exclusive short events, and extra onboard amenities like laundry service and Wi-Fi were the top um, selections. So, thank you for participating, and without further ado, I'll pass it on to Mark Conroy. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and again, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to uh, participate in this webinar. Uh, it comes at a really interesting time. I actually, two weeks ago, or about a week and a half ago, I spent the last seven days of our 19, uh, 2017 uh, World Cruise on board, it, meeting with individual guests and uh, talking about this cruise and our 2018 departure, and, and got a lot of feedback. And, and and I think the, the theme for this one, the tale of tales, is a great theme because having met with probably almost every full cruiser on the 2017 World Cruise, 
Almost every one of them has an interesting story. What a unique group of people, well-traveled, well-experienced. They know what they want and they know what, they, what works and what doesn't work. So it was great feedback for me to continue to help plan things like the World Cruise and also present this to you today. Uh, what we're working on in 2019, I think, is something totally unique, and, and that's what these guests are, are looking for, something totally unique. So what we've done is engaged uh, uh, renowned, uh, nine renowned authors or artists or special guests for the different segments of the World Cruise. And we've asked each of them to either create a, uh, a literary journal or an artwork inspired by the journey that they are taking or about to take. And we hope that it will be, a, first of all, obviously a, a great a remembrance of the World Cruise for our guests, but also will uh, be funny, be fun, and be illustrated, and, and, and we'll just kind of show the fulfillment that the World Cruise can, can bring you. And, and last but not least, uh, what we tried to do is kind of fuse together the magic of storytelling with the beauty of travel and discovery. The first two I can announce is Paul Thoreau. Obviously, most people have heard of Paul. He's written many novels and and is famous for his, his work in, in visiting faraway places. And Pico Iyer, Iver, who's uh, actually written some amazing books, both very well traveled, and they will be both joining us to add their thoughts and wisdom to, the, to, the, to our, our piece that we're putting together. Plus, they'll be there to interact with many of our guests. And now, let me take you through what the itinerary really looks like. It will begin in one of my favorite cities in the world, San Francisco. And by the way, we're going to have a gala event uh, at the Four Seasons in San Francisco prior to the start of the cruise. It's a 132-day long voyage, the longest one we've ever done. Uh, five continents, 31 countries, 52 ports, and over 17 overnights in ports. And again, this is an itinerary, quite frankly, that was, was really de devised by uh, our, our, our guests themselves and with a lot of feedback from our technical department. When we first took all the ports that our, our guests wanted to, we laid them into the program we have that writes itineraries, and it was a beautiful cruise. Unfortunately, it lasted 192 days. So what we did is we came and fine-tuned the itinerary to bring it down into that 132 days. But I think one of the things you'll find for the 132 days, it's priced very well and gives customers a great experiences into some places that n neither we or many other cruise lines haven't been on the World Cruise in a long time. The first leg is obviously we, we sail out of San Francisco where it can be cold and rainy sometimes. Hopefully we'll do as well as we did in 17 and have some bright, bright blue skies. And we're heading due south where the temperature gets warmer every day and the sea gets more inviting. We'll have a six glorious days at sea followed by a call in Nukahiva, one of the Marquesas Islands that's uh, seldom visited and, and, and be brought ashore there. And then to Rangaroa, which is the second largest atoll in the world, then on to Morea in French Polynesia, and then overnighting in Papiete. And that's called Into the Blue. This, and in Papiete, there'll be a special event for our full World Cruise customers uh, when we arrive, a arrival uh, in a uh, in Amaro, and it will have a welcome ceremony that should be a great expense. For those of you who haven't been to French Polynesia, it's a, it's a real treat. The second one is Passage to the New World. We go from Papiete to Tahiti, down to Sydney, Australia, via Auckland, New Zealand, with calls in Bora Bora. Everybody has, if you're into, in French Polynesia, of course, you need to visit Bora Bora, then on to Rangatoa, then on to the Bavo Group, and then on to Auckland, New Zealand, where we have a, a very full day. We're in Auckland from 8 in the morning until midnight, followed by two days at sea and in Sydney. And again, a, a, a great itinerary. And really, this is kind of the, the opposite of the migration path the Polynesian people actually took uh, to um, to French Polynesia and, and to the, ultimately the Hawaiian Islands. The third one is the, the Wizard of Oz, kind of playing on the Australian theme of uh, Sydney, Brisbane, a city that's not often visited, obviously the Gold Coast of, of Australia and Cairns and uh, along the Great Barrier Reef and in Indonesia, uh, a, a stop in Komodo to see the dragons and ending up in Bali uh, at the end of this segment. Again, it should be a delightful cruise in wonderful weather. The next one is we get into uh, Indonesia and beyond, and of course we and Malaysia. A beautiful day in Bali, followed by a couple days at sea, followed by Sandakan, Malaysia. Of course, well known for its wildlife, and particularly the orangutans. Then one day at sea, followed by a full day call from eight in the morning until midnight in Manila, in the Philippines. And and this is a very special. First of all, Manila is a lovely city, but it's also a special stop for us because 
I would say roughly 35 to 40 percent of our crew are from Manila, and the ship gets a very warm welcome from not only the city at place, but the friends and family of our crew members that work so hard to service your passengers. And it's a special day for both the crew and the guests, because obviously during these long cruises, the crew gets to know the passengers very well and vice versa. And people are always amazed to meet their children and uncles and aunts and cousins. It's a great day. Then followed by a day and then followed by a, to the Cushing in, in, in Taiwan, followed by Keelong, the port for the capital city of Taipei. A couple of amazing days, Cushing being a, kind of a, a very interesting, uh, not rural, but uh, majestic place with fjords and, and forests, followed by Keelong, which is obviously next to one of the larger, most dynamic cities in the world. And then two days at sea, followed by two days in Osaka, uh, and then this segment ending up in Japan. And, and in Osaka, we're going to do an, another special event for the World Cruisers, um, <coughs> which is a, a, a overnight an overland to visit the Naro, which is where the, uh, the where a, a very famous Buddhist Shinto religion are venerated, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So this is again one of those events that should kind of blow people away. Uh, on this segment of the cruise. So the next slide, please. And then from Tokyo, it's pretty fast moving. Uh, overnight in Tokyo again, two days at sea, followed by two days, almost two and a half days in Shanghai with a day at sea, followed by two full days in Hong Kong, followed by two days at sea, uh, followed by two days in Ho Chi Minh City, and then on to Singapore. The great thing here is, is that these are all cities that deserve at least an overnight. So not only do your guests get to enjoy the day in Shanghai, but a night in Shanghai, and the same in Hong Kong and in Ho Chi Minh City. And of course, because of the size of our vessel, we pull up closer into Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City than the big ships do, so we can get very close to the city, so your drive into town isn't quite as far. The next leg is, is, a, is a fascinating leg going from Singapore to M Mombasa. Uh, it, it really has some amazing ports, including Trincali, which we haven't visited in Sri Lanka before, Obviously, Colombo, Mali, and the Maldives, and then the Seychelles Islands, a beautiful beach area, and then last but not least into Mombasa and Kenya. And of course, there'll be opportunities in between Kenya and South Africa to take alternative uh, safaris and, and game park visits. So this is really the exciting eastern part of Africa that allows people to either spend the time on the ship or do some uh, over the overlands. Uh, to it. So we're in Mombasa, then on to Zanzibar, and then to, to Mialt, and then uh, to Madagascar, uh, 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 to Noisy Bay and Noisy Kumba, and uh, then Richards Bay, and again there's an overland opportunity from where you disembark in Richards Bay and, and re-embark re either in Cape Town or, or in uh, Durban, uh, and then into Cape Town. So. Uh, the, the cool thing here, I think, is if you've not been to Cape Town before, or even if you have, obviously Table Mountain is a place that everybody has to see, but a visit to Robbins Island uh, is, is, is an amazing experience. I remember I did it once right after Mandela became president, and it, it was an amazing. And, and one of the unique things here is uh, it's getting fewer and fewer, but many of the guides who take you around this, this uh, prison actually were, were actually prisoners there or guards there. And, and now they're friends and they tell the story of how democracy began and the success of South Africa. The next point is, is probably the most exotic part of the world cruise that we've ever done, and, and that is the, the cruise from Cape Town up to Seville in Spain. Uh, we go to uh, overnight in Cape Town, so there's plenty of time to experience Cape Town and again opportunities to do safaris before or after this segment. And then an overnight of one of my favorite places, Walvis Bay. This is an amazing port itself, is this little teeny tiny port, but it's the gateway to the, the giant, the great sand dunes. And uh, there's nothing like going out in the countryside here and, and experiencing both during the day and at night uh, the sand dunes in Namibia. Uh, then a, a, day, a couple of days at sea, Santa Tamau, and then Togo. These are places that you can't get to or really wouldn't want to go to unless it's very well curated. And of course, that's what we do for a living. So these are bucket list places that people haven't been that will really enjoy and, and getting up eventually to Dakar, Casablanca, and then into Sevilla, Spain. And the beauty of going to Sevilla on Silver Seas is that we actually pull right into the city of Sevilla going up the river 
so you don't have that long three-hour drive uh, from Cadiz. So again, another highlight in, in a in a port that, quite frankly, hasn't been visited on a world cruise that I can remember, and I've been doing world cruises since 1982. Uh, then the last leg, which again is a fascinating leg, uh, we we uh, we go from Sevilla to Lisbon in Portugal. Uh, then we have a day at sea, and then to Bilbao in Spain, in Spain, and then we're up in Bordeaux overnight, all the way up into the city, San Malo. Then we have uh, we arrive in London and disembark at London Greenwich. So this is the world cruise, and truly at its heart. And uh, and the exciting event we're doing here is in obviously the excitement. I think first segment will be in obviously going up to Sevilla. Lots of things to do there, and particularly because we're overnighting. But we're actually have a private opening of the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao. It'll be open just for our world cruise passengers. And then after the, the, the strolling through the galleries, they'll be invited to go to a Michelin star uh, restaurant and have an amazing Spanish dinner. So again, I think it's a classic way to end a classic cruise and the, probably the, one of the highlight events of this world cruise. Uh, I want to talk about the benefits since we asked that question beforehand. Uh, obviously, for people in this is really geared towards the Americas, of North America, U.S. and Canada, for that matter. It's round trip business class air to, uh, to San Francisco and then home from London. Uh, there's a Bon Voyage dinner and overnight in San Francisco. Obviously, private car transfers. There's a four thousand dollar onboard spending credit for double occupancy suites. So that's four thousand dollars to spend on board, uh, and so guests can choose to spend it on what they want to, whether it be the wonderful shore excursions we offer or the spa treatments, wherever. Four exclusive world cruises. I've spent a brief amount of time talking about them, but uh, they are uh, going to be wonderful. In addition to those events, we typically do some other events on board that the crew and the captain uh, build, uh, developed on their own. Uh, one of my favorites was uh, dinner under the lifeboats. I thought uh, it was kind of an imaginative way where we took all the world cruise guests out and and on the lifeboat deck, we had a set a full dinner that was delivered out of the main dining room in a, in a wonderful evening. Obviously, there'll be, uh, we always try to do some commemorative gifts. And, and one of the questions we always ask ourselves, should we do lots of small ones or one big one? And again, about half the people want one and half the people want the other. So uh, we have the silver, uh, silver Shore baggage and delight handling. We, every guest is entitled to, I think it's two suitcases per, uh, per guest. Uh, that we ship from uh, their home to San Francisco and from London uh, back to home. Uh, there's free laundry service, uh, unlimited Wi-Fi service, and, and then something new that we've added this year, and this is a medical services package. And what this is is that, you know, they're on their ship for 132 days, and, and, and they're bound to catch a cold or stub their toe or something happens to them during the cruise, and they'll be using the services of our medical center. And in, any, and in cases of using the services of, of the medical center, the medical center will take care of them for little things and big things while they're on board the ship. And there will be no additional charge for those services for our world cruise guests. Obviously, they, this isn't for uh, treatment of people that have chronic problems, so they need to bring their own drugs. But anything that needs to be delivered here based on something that occurred on the ship will take care of it. Of course, also does not uh, include hospital stays off the ship. So. Again, this is uh, this is really that services on board where you you catch a cold, you 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 uh, you need something, uh, you know, uh, have a rash. I I don't know what the medical services are that people need, but this is a uh, many of the guests when I when we announced this on board the ship, I I got a round of applause. So it sounds like it's a good thing. And then last but not least, we give you a visa package. Again, it's for the U.S. and Canada only. Uh, we can't do all the other countries. It's not because we don't want to. We actually give other countries a credit instead of this, and it's just because of the complicated nature of visas around the world. But this is really helps not only for our guests appreciate this, but you as our agent partners appreciate it so that you don't have to be shopping around finding out what visas are, are required for each of the countries we visit and providing them. We do that as a service for you, for our full world customers. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, obviously, if you sell one of these, you know you make some real money. But I just thought, because you've taken the time today, um, if, if you make a new booking between now and June 9th, we're going to give you an addition to that very generous commission, a $500 uh, bonus commission in the form of gift card, by the way. Uh, and, and it will be, uh, again, those who attended the webinar, and they will have to be for new bookings, unfortunately. So 
don't get mad at me if you already have somebody booked. But if you already have somebody booked, it's great anyway because you've already made a, a, a wonderful commission. So now I think if it's okay with you all, I'll just open this up for questions and I'll try to provide you specific answers. If you've got a question that's specifically about your uh, agency, uh, we, can, we'll, we'll, we can answer that offline or separately. Uh, and by the way, I, I do want to give you my email address. It, it, uh, I, I, I Don't call me to make a reservation or email me to make a reservation, but if you have a question you'd like to ask or if you ever have a, a compliment you want to pay or a, or, a, or a complaint you want to make on your behalf or your client's behalf, I'd love to hear from you. It's mconroy at silverc.com. Actually, if you're unhappy, it's... Uh, it's M. Conroy at, uh, I can't forget the rest of it. No, but seriously, <laughs> uh, it's M. Conroy at silverc.com. I'd love to hear from you and and, uh, and 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 have your observations. We'd love to hear what you think about this itinerary. It's it's very unique. You know, going all the way up to Tokyo, having Australia and Tokyo on the same itinerary is, is, is pretty amazing. And I think ending in London, we thought about ending it in North America, but we thought ending it in London gave us some pretty decent uh, uh port content. And London, if you don't live in Miami or Fort Lauderdale, London is about as easy to get to with nice big airplanes, uh, particularly when you're in business class as it is to get home from South Florida. So I think with that, I think we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. All right. Thank you, Mark, so much for this wonderful presentation. Uh, I do want to apologize. We had to switch computer uh, screens during the presentation. So uh, I apologize for that. But we will send the email out with the recording of the this se uh, session and also with the presentation slides for you to review. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, we have received a few questions. Please, if you if you have more questions, this is the time to ask them. So I I'm, I don't see many questions going on here. So if you have any questions, this is the time. The questions that we see right now, Mark, uh, it's really about segments. Uh, when will chapter three and four be open to book is one of the questions. So uh, right now, what will probably most likely will will happen is is that we'll uh, in in a, probably uh, I'm guessing is that in September. Uh, let's see, it's May now. I'm guessing by July, July early August, we'll open up the segments for sale. Uh, this is kind of a tricky balancing act because you know right now we're you should all be receiving or have received. Promotions in promoting the individual segments on the on the world cruise for 2018 We've opened them up and they're available for sale to anyone and my guess is we'll wait sometime between I, I know it's a bit of a time for now, but between August and September uh, to make sure because the, obviously the challenge is we want to Fill the ship and we'd like to have as many full cruisers as possible And of course when you start taking segment sales, then you have trouble fulfilling this the full cruise demand uh, that, that uh, we, we normally have so We'll announce it to you uh, as soon as they're open. There'll be an announcement at a time that will let you know in advance that the segments will be open. And I'm sure we will have some segment sales, although uh, uh, we just don't know how much yet. So um, the other question we have here, I think that you just answered the question. Uh, one of them was about if the this special uh, offer that we have is for if it's valid for partial work crews. No, we're not open for partial uh, work crews right now, so it's only for full full work cruisers. And then we also have one about the onboard credit if it's for a person that for stateroom. It's it's actually four thousand dollars for uh, for a double. And I, if I'm not mistaken, it's three thousand dollars for a single because typically the singles are billed at 150 percent of the fare. So that's pretty much how it works. Or if they pay, in some cases, if the ship's tight or it's a large suite, they pay double fare for a single. In that case, they would get the four, full four thousand uh, dollars. We have a question here on the medical services, which is noted here. So, um, does the medical service include items dispensed by the medical department, or just the services of the doctor or nurse? It, it includes items dispensed uh, as long as they're not items that are are, are normal. Like, say you're a diabetic. Uh, obviously, the the the, the you, you arrive as a diabetic, so uh, and if you need diabetes diabetes medicine, the ship can fulfill it. But but if uh, if, if but if it's not a it, they'll they will charge you if it's not for a, a a element that you had before you got on the cruise that you were already being treated for. So so for instance, if uh, I'm trying to think of what for painkillers or or uh, if you're not on a med if you have regular medicines for prescriptions 
and you need help fulfilling them, then there'll be a charge for that. But if it's something that's come up during the cruise that you need a prescription for or a treatment for or an x-ray for that we do on board, then it would be included. This will this will be outlined in great detail because it's 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 obviously not insurance. All we're doing is providing the medical services that we normal charge normally provide, and we're just waiving the charge as one of the benefits for the full world cruisers. So, uh, again, things like if somebody's seasick and needs to get a shot for that, that would be included. Would be a good example. Although most people, if they're going to spend a 132 days at sea, aren't or 132 days on a cruise, aren't likely to be prone to seasickness. So. All right, there's one here for Mark Conroy. Since you've announced the itineraries and the special events so far, is there one element of the 2019 World Cruise that people seem most excited about? I think Japan would come right to mind. It's been something that that uh, that we've tried to work into the schedule before, and and again, you know, the world is round, and it's there's great distances, particularly in the Pacific Ocean. And if you think about it, the quickest way to get to to Japan from San Francisco is is directly across the Atlantic via Hawaii, but unfortunately it's in January and that's not a great time to be in the North Pacific or be in Japan. So we came up with the idea of heading south down to Australia and then working our way back up, which is kind of around the way to do it, but it's a great way to follow the climate change. So I would say that the first part that's very excited is the for, for many people is Japan because again and we haven't done we do it as most of you know we probably we do it on the Silver Shadow and we do it on the Silver Explorer and the Expedition Mode, but we haven't done it on a World Cruise before. And then I think the second uh, most excited segment is that segment from Cape Town up to Lisbon, Sevilla. Uh, and, and that's just because, again, it's many ports that we haven't visited before. It's a different way to return to Europe from the past. We typically have come through the Mediterranean. Uh, and, I, and I think if you haven't done it, the sail up the river to Sevilla is amazing if if you haven't been to the the, the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, it's it's a it's a pretty spectacular building. Um, uh, lots of things to do and see there that you probably have never seen before, and and we're quite excited about it. I think one of the things that gives us comfort in doing this, and people ask me why we're visiting some of these ports, and it's because this is the benefit of being in the expedition business. We have now for the last two or three years run our expedition ships back up through this area. Uh, after completing Antarctica on the way to the Arctic, and we've gained some experiences where to go and what to do and what to see. So uh, I think we'll be very, very, which you have to be very well prepared for for the West African side, and I think we are very well set up. And then last but not least, uh, uh, coming up the Thames, we're obviously going to the Greenwich, not all the way to London because the ship's too big to fit under Tower Bridge, but we will be in Greenwich, and hopefully their new cruise pier will be done by then. We're we're praying actually, but because uh, otherwise we have to do the disembarkation by tender. But uh, but we think it will be done. And and, the, and coming up the Thames River past the floodgates and everything is again an, another amazing amazing sweet sailing up into Bordeaux is is a, another wonderful place to visit. Um, you know the go uh, the, the to going to Madagascar and seeing the the lemurs lemurs is is another. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that kind of gets you. You know the Again, I, I wish we had 180 days because we could do an amazing, uh, even more extensive world cruise in 180 days. But we just unfortunately, uh, most of our guests tell us they, you know, they want to get home, um, uh, you know, before too late in May so that they can start enjoying the weather at home. So, Mark, there's one more here for you. But before I want to an uh, answer another one, are there any marketing promotional materials available? Um, I um, did not mention. I forgot to mention. I apologize. If you go on your control panel and you see the handouts, we actually made available a day by day with a map for you, and also a brand new. It just we just got it those files this morning. Uh, World Cruise 2019 brochure. So um, you have it as a digital form. It hasn't even gone to press yet, so it's really you're being the first one to see this. Um, so you can download from the handout pane on the control panel, the brochure, and also the day-by-day. -day. Those are the materials we have available. And, and by the way, there is one other space, and that is if you go to the, our, our website and click on Destinations and click on World Cruise, you'll see the 19 and, and the 2018 World Cruise and, and the grand, other Grand Cruises. But if you click on the 19 World Cruise, you'll get down into the itinerary again and the, and the pricing grid. 
uh, and it also has the benefits. So the, there's, uh, again, all the resources we currently have on this are uh, in a digital form, but there will be some promotional materials uh, and take a look at them. Of course, feel free to call reservations and talk to them about, and, and your sales director talk about them about some of the features and benefits of the cruise, but we're quite excited. We already have, to give you an idea, um, about 140 people have signed up so far for the World Cruise. You remember this is the Silver Whisper that, that holds 382 guests, and, and because of singles, she's pretty much full at, at around 3, 340, 350. So um, if you've got a client who's interested, uh, I would, and particularly if they're interested in one of the larger suites, Silver and above, or even the Miranda suites, they should uh, book now because they won't be able to get the space later. All right, so the question I was holding for you is about the ship. So can you talk a bit about the ship? Has it gone through any renovation, or is it going into dry dock anytime soon? Uh, two things. She, she did go through a, a renovation. This is one of the challenges we faced, and it was some misunderstanding, I think, and some disappointment in the 17 World Cruise, because uh, when when I got here, quite frankly, a year ago, the itinerary was already set, and we, and we didn't have enough time to do a long dry dock. So we... We did decide to update it, but unfortunately, the Muse hadn't been delivered yet, so we, we didn't know well how the Muse was going to be received. And so uh, we, instead of musinizing the ship, what we did is we basically upgraded it with, with the same fit and fixtures and furniture and soft goods that it already had because that's what it's designed to do. So one of the things that people were expecting major changes, and, and it weren't major changes, there was new carpet there, but it was a, a copy of the same carpet that was already down. and. Uh, there was new ta you know, chairs and tables, but again, they were covered with the same uh, materials. So there is a plan. Uh, we may have a dry dock in 17, but we definitely have a, a dry dock plan in 2018 where we will we will musinize the whisper and, and add many of the features that people have told us they like about the uh, about the about the muse uh, to the whisper, including some modifications in some of the dining and. And just a, a refreshment of the color palette, and then some just basic man, maintenance that we'll we'll be doing. So she she will have she possibly may have a long dry dock in 17. We're still working on that, that which she'll definitely have one in 18 before this world cruise. And and we'll also keep you posted as to what we're we're going to be able to complete and not complete. The I know that at the end of the world cruise, the architects from the Muse were actually on the ship for two or three days, uh, just scouting around to see what elements they could. You know, basically, add to the whisper that would make sense. It's one of those challenging things because the whisper has been a, a workhorse for us. She's in good shape, I feel, but she does need an updating. And it's what the, what do you change and not make people unhappy? Because one of the things you find about about business and travel, particularly people that have been on ships for a long time, is they they like kind of the familiarity of the ship. So they love the theater, I think, and they love the dining room, but they would like us to make some changes too. So uh, we'll keep you posted on that. All right, uh, I think we have time for one last, but I think you already touched upon this, but the London is a great way to end the work cruise. We will be sailing under the London Bridge, you already said, but maybe just reinforce. Not, we, we will be sailing up the Thames, we'll be going past the embankment and, and, and the storm barrier. We'll be going up into London itself, but we will not pass Tower Bridge. The, the wind and the cloud can both dock at Tower Bridge, but we're... Uh, we're too tall, so those of you know the Thames area, we dock it in right at the Greenwich Center where the where the Greenwich Mean Time is kept and where they held the equestrian events for the Olympics in the Olympics in London, and 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 we will be running a shuttle, a motor shuttle up to um, the, the up to the uh, 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 up to the the dock for the uh, the London Tower, uh, so that. I would say we're a couple of miles south of the London Tower on the Thames, but we will be turning in Greenwich uh, and, and not getting all the way up to, to London because, the, unfortunately, even though the Muse is a small ship, it's still too large to go up and, and navigate up, up and down underneath Tower Bridge. But it still should be a wonderful way to end the world cruise and a great way to get home. All right. I think those are all for today. Um, if you have any additional questions, um, please, as a reminder, um, you can always contact your area sales director and or our inside sales team, 1-800-722-9955, and they will be happy to assist you with any questions you may still have about this or any other cruise. 
Um, for those that may have missed something or would like to review the presentation again, uh, you will be receiving a follow-up email including a link to view the recording of today's webinar at your leisure. So on behalf of your local area sales director and everyone here at Silver Sea, Mark Roy and I thank you for joining us today and we look forward to welcoming new customers aboard a Silver Sea ship and in the very near future aboard Silver Whisper for our cruise. Happy selling.